Look at this frog. Yes, it's frozen. It's not moving anymore. It's not breathing. Doesn't even seem to be alive. This tiny creature balances life and death because it has a unique ability. Today you'll find out which animal uses real hypnosis, who the real animal ninja is, how spiders learn to fly, and how this bird got eight legs. Let's go. Do you think a spider can breathe underwater? Well, the diving bell spider can. True, it has no gills and other useful devices that fish have, but it does have an amazing ability. Maybe it's even a little bit of a wizard. Have you seen the fourth Harry Potter movie? We need that scene in the lake, the second trial of Triwizard Tournament, and Cedric Diggory. Then he used the bubblehead charm to breathe underwater? Smart guy, so it seems. Wait, what's a spider have to do with all this? Oh, yeah, it can do the same thing, and doesn't even need a magic wand. The diving bell spider is considered the only species of spider that lives underwater almost all the time. Hunting, resting, mating, feeding, laying eggs, wintering, all this it can do without rising to the surface. The only thing a spider can surface for is a supply of oxygen, which sometimes has to be replenished. Otherwise, something like that very head bubble comes in handy. When the diving bell spider dives into the water, the abdominal hairs covered with a special fatty substance don't get wet. Air is trapped between them, which allows the spider to stay underwater for a long time using a primitive natural aqua lung. But this is not the only way to store oxygen. The diving bell spider also creates a kind of underwater storage made of spider web and an unknown substance where it retains precious air. It all depends on the size of the individual. While some spiders have learned to hold their breath with their webs, others have mastered flight. Welcome to the arachnophobe's nightmare! Some of these creatures can actually fly! Or rather, they sort of float in the wind. Using a web, they can rise several kilometers into the air. And what's more, some of them are even able to float across the ocean. At least that's what scientists think. Compared to the spider's web, the air is similar to a thick liquid, so the effect of gravity is easily neutralized by what can be called the stickiness of the air. It's pretty hard to drown when you're floating jelly. Also, only small and very light spiders can fly. By the way, this is a completely conscious action. Before flying, spiders test the wind by lifting their front paw. They test it. They prefer a breeze of about 11 kilometers an hour. Only one question remains. Why, in fact, is all this happening? Well, despite the fact that scientists still don't know everything about spider flight, it seems that the reason is simple colonization. The young ones go on flights to find suitable places for themselves and to give life to a new generation. Well, and scare the crap out of someone. Well, let's leave the horrors of flying spiders for a while and turn to the wonders of nature that don't give you premature gray hair. Imagine that you're walking through the park and suddenly you hear the sound of blasters. Seriously, the stormtroopers are missing again. Wait, why would there be stormtroopers near my house? No, you're not crazy. There's just a lyrebird lurking somewhere in the bushes. Lyrebirds are amazing creatures that can imitate natural and artificial sounds with amazing accuracy. In general, it absolutely doesn't matter for them whom or what they imitate. Other birds? Sure. Koalas? Yup. Dingoes? No problem. A chainsaw giving someone a total immersion in a horror movie? Why not? How about a sudden car alarm next to a lyrebird, making the car owner jump out into the street for a long time because of that false alarm that the lyrebird made? Sorry, buddy. Lyrebirds like the sounds. And yes, I suggest photographing this bird in silent mode. Otherwise, you'll start to feel like there's a whole battalion of paparazzi lurking around. Dogs barking, babies crying, cell phone ringtones, fire sirens, even the sound of a human voice. Nothing seems impossible for the lyrebird. They even know how to teach each other different sounds. There was a known case where a man played the flute next to his domestic lyrebird, and the latter then sang the melody to his wild congeners in the park. Oh yeah, I forgot to tell you where this bird lives. You probably guessed it. 
Australia is home to some truly amazing creatures. Unlike lyrebirds, onocophorans, or velvet worms, are also found outside of Australia. If you run your finger over an onocophorous body, it feels like you're touching velvet. But it's better, perhaps, not to touch them. The cuter the caterpillar, the more poisonous it usually is. However, the ability of velvet worms isn't in the venom at all, but in the way they hunt. Spotting a potential dinner, they just shoot a special slime at it. Ugh. Like from cannons. Only instead of cannons, they have glands near their mouths. Believe it or not, they can shoot at a distance of up to one meter. A single shot is usually enough to cover the victim completely. While the mucus solidifies, the insect can't get out of it, and soon it finds itself eaten by the worm. As soon as the onocophora digs into its prey, saliva is injected into it, which immediately starts the digestion process. Well, isn't that classic? I bet onocophorans would never be able to detect this creature, even if they groped it completely, because in front of you is a born master of camouflage, the perfect ninja of the animal kingdom, practically invisible. You see? Take a closer look. Maybe this. Or this. Wait, that's, that's just a leaf. Okay, okay, I'll be honest. I didn't find it right away myself because the giant leafy thing doesn't want to be discovered at all. Yep, this slightly rotted leaf is an insect that lives in the tropics of Malaysia and can reach 10 centimeters in length. However, even such large specimens have simply divine camouflage skills. Not only do they look like leaves, but they also behave like leaves. They don't produce oxygen, they barely move during the day. Even if you poke them with your finger, the leaf hoppers won't budge. And only towards dusk will they go munch on some leaves. When caught, the adults make a peculiar noise. It resembles a bee's buzzing sound and scares away a lot of predators. You think it's a way to protect yourself? But who needs to grow teeth or any poisonous hairs when you look like a leaf? And behave like a leaf. Think like a leaf. Be like a leaf. Actually, you know what? I think I finally found living confirmation of the expression, you are what you eat. By the way, if that expression really works, then honestly, I won't even speculate on what this lizard ate, but it can walk on water. Or rather run very fast. <laughs> it looks insanely funny. <laughs> Yeah. I don't know why, but I can't watch quietly as it runs away. And here's another fact for you. This lizard is called the common basilisk. Just imagine that it's not a giant snake crawling through the pipes inside Hogwarts, but something's running. And it's that. It seems that such a choice of monster would slightly undermine Slytherin's credibility. But back to the basilisk's unique ability. For a long time, scientists couldn't figure out how it managed to stay on the surface since the lizard weighs so much more than all sorts of water snakes. In the end, it turned out that the basilisk paddles with huge claws rather than actually running on the water. By the way, it can run up to 500 meters on the water surface at a speed of 12 kilometers an hour. <laughs> <laughs> On land, it moves a little slower and can easily do without oxygen for up to half an hour. And if humans are clearly superior to basilisks in two points, we somehow don't get along with running on water. Someone's already invented special shoes and liquid mountaineering, but let's be honest, we're not going to get into the Slytherin beasties yet. So, you better take a look at this picture. A bird? With lots of legs? Sometimes nature makes very strange creatures. I guess this creature must run fast or jump high? I don't know. Why would anyone even need so many legs? Sorry, no offense, millipedes. Okay, actually, a jacana, like all other birds, only has two legs. The rest belong to the chicks who hide under the father's wings. Actually, even the two legs of jacanas are quite unusual. Because of their elongated toes and claws, the bird's weight is distributed over a larger area, allowing them to walk on leaves floating in the water. And they do it rather quickly. As soon as a predator appears on the horizon, the caring parent hurries to the chicks to hide them under the wings. It's believed that sometimes the chicks fall from the leaves and then the father fishes them out, dries them, and warms them. Cute. And if that seems like it's not a real ability to you, let me remind you. We're talking about the animal world here. A world where you can be eaten the minute you're born if your parents don't take care to protect you. And who else would be so cool to save their kids? Cuttlefish don't really care about their offspring, but they have another ability. It's hypnosis. Yeah, I agree. You don't think of a perfect predator when you say cuttlefish, but they're actually really cool. When they hunt, these creatures purposely create running stripes on their bodies with their chromatophores. Not only do they look like disco kings, but they also hypnotize their victims. You would think that crabs and shrimps have enough intelligence to realize that danger is approaching them, but on the other hand, it's really, really so beautiful.
Seems that the mud skippers looked at all this disco and decided they don't need all that underwater life. Never mind that the skippers live in a completely different region. They became amphibians for a reason, right? You could say that they are fish that have made it to land and learned to survive everywhere. In contrast to other tidal fish, mud skippers don't hide under rocks when the water level changes, but come out on land and actively crawl on it. They move by jumping and leaning on their strong, elongated front fins. Some of the mud skippers can climb up roots and trunks of trees, holding onto them using their suckers, modified pelvic fins. What's more, they even manage to put up a fight for territory then calmly return to the water and behave as a decent fish. We'll see you later.